Hi class, this next module is going to discuss satsumas, which are probably my favorite citrus crop to grow and to eat. They're very popular here in Louisiana, and satsuma season is something everyone looks forward to. So what is a satsuma? What makes it different than a lime, a lemon, a kumquat? The satsuma is native to China, and it's the number one citrus grown in Japan. The Japanese were the ones that did a lot of the satsuma breeding early on and developed many of the cultivars that we grow today. The satsuma was brought to the U.S. in the 1700s, so over 300 years ago, by Jesuit priests in the New Orleans area. So satsumas have been around for a very long time. Uh, they're actually grown in groves along the Mississippi River in the New Orleans area, where many of our commercial farms still are today. The ripe fruit can be harvested from late September through January and even into February, making for an extended harvest season, depending on the variety. And we're gonna dig more into that as we move through this. The most common commercial citrus fruit grown in Louisiana is the satsuma. It's got the largest market share, followed by the navel oranges. So we like to enjoy these and our growers produce a lot of them for us. Satsuma trees do vary in size based on if they're on a dwarfing rootstock or not, how you choose to prune them and how they grow, but in general, left to their own devices, the trees can get 15 to 20 feet tall and nearly as wide. But with some cultural controls, you can keep them a little bit smaller. Certain varieties are more compact than others. And again, the rootstock does factor into the mature tree size. The fruits are slightly flattened spheres, so they're not perfectly round. It's almost like they've been squished a little into a flattened disc. And they vary in size depending on the variety, but in general, they're about two to three inches in diameter. They have a thin, loose rind that makes them very easy to peel. That's part of why they're so popular in addition to their flavor. You don't have to use a paring knife to get them open. You can just use your hands and peel them very quickly and easily. Many of the varieties are also seedless, naturally. Um, as Joe mentioned in a previous slideshow, that means they're a little bit parthenocarpic. So some of the varieties are known for being completely seedless and others might have three or four seeds inside of them. It really does vary based on the variety. What's interesting about satsumas is you can't just yank them off the tree. Um, if you do that, that thin rind will tear and rip and it decreases the shelf life of the satsuma fruit. So it's best to use your hand pruners or a pair of scissors to clip the stem right above the fruit and they hold much longer in the fridge or on your countertop as a result of that. Over 100 cultivars have been developed over time and we're gonna take you through some of the most common ones. I do wanna point out in this photo that it looks like there's some green satsumas in that box. However, everything in there is fully ripe. Satsumas can be ripe with a green rind and really you have to test them to see if they're ready. As soon as you see a hint of orange, you know those satsumas are ripe. But once we get into September, um, early September, it's time to start monitoring and checking your trees. So get out there and clip a fruit off the tree, peel it, taste it, and see if they're ready. Now, another interesting thing about satsumas is they do get sweeter the more cold they're exposed to. Now, just like any other citrus fruit, once it gets below 26 degrees Fahrenheit, there can be damage to the fruit as it freezes. However, some cold exposure above 26 does uh, sort of develop the sugars and the natural flavors inside the fruit, and you end up with a better tasting piece of fruit. So don't pick all your trees at once. Leave some fruit on there and let it kind of get exposed to the cold into December and January, and you might be surprised. That's some good eating. Walking through the varieties, we're gonna start with Owari. Owari is by far the most popular cultivar uh, grown throughout the Gulf South region. And it's also one of our older cultivars. The original trees planted in the New Orleans area by the Jesuits were probably most likely Owari. It's a variety that's been in our area and documented to have been in our area for over 300 years, which is fantastic. And we're still growing the same trees. Uh, they mature mid-season, so November through December. It's a seedless fruit, and the mature size tree is about 8 to 12 feet tall with a 10-foot wide spread, again, depending on how you're pruning them. 
One thing about Owari and why it's been replaced a little bit by some of these newer cultivars that we'll discuss is the fruit doesn't store very well on the tree. So this is one variety where when they're ready, you might want to pick them and share them with your friends and neighbors. A uh, little cold exposure is good, but if you leave them on there too long, they tend to get mealy and the fruit quality decreases. So it doesn't hold well on the tree and it's best to harvest this one when they're ready. Brown Select is another very popular cultivar here in Louisiana. It's a medium to a large fruit and it's mostly seedless. You might find one or two seeds per fruit um, if you're gonna find seeds at all. It matures October through November and the fruit does keep very well on the trees without becoming puffy. Now we're gonna talk about puffy fruit in a subsequent slideshow. Um, a lot of satsumas will exhibit signs of puffy fruit where the rind is kind of gnarly, um, there's gaps between the rind and the fruit and the fruit quality is not as good as a normal piece of fruit. We'll dig into that more later, so just keep that in the back of your mind. But brown, brown select tends not to get the puffy fruit as much as some other satsuma varieties. The fruit can hold on that tree too, so this is one that the cold exposure is a good option for uh, these ones. The trees are large and open branching. They're a little more rambling than an owari, and they're about 12 to, feet, 12 to 14 feet tall um, and just about as wide when they're fully mature. The next two varieties are two that were developed here in Louisiana by LSU. Louisiana early ripens very early, just as you would expect from the name. September into October is when this crop is going to be ready. It's grown to hit that early market um, for a lot of our commercial growers. But if you have room for multiple satsuma trees in your yard, try planting a Louisiana early so you get about three weeks of satsumas before the rest of your crops come in with the other varieties. It's a good strategy. This is a very large tree, mature size about 20 feet in either direction. The fruit does not store well on the tree with this variety either. So it's best to pick them all at once when they're ready, share them with your friends and neighbors. Everyone loves that. But being developed in Louisiana, it is adapted to our local growing challenges and conditions. So it's a good choice for our area. Another Louisiana homebred, this is early St. Anne. Um, it's a slightly larger tree than Louisiana early. It ripens in that September, October time frame, and it's a medium-sized seedless fruit. This is a really nice variety, um, taste-wise, that I wish I'd see more. Now we're gonna jump into some cold hardiness superstars. So if you don't live in the extreme southern part of Louisiana, this is where you should start paying attention. The next four varieties were all developed at Texas A&M, and they were bred to be more cold hardy. So remember that hardiness map that Dr. Joe shared with you. Satsumas are among some of the most cold tolerant types of citrus. However, they do have their limits. Uh, these with the sito are large, mostly seedless fruit with a very um, thin, smooth skin, about three inch diameter fruit. The mature trees are 10 to 12 feet tall and six foot wide. Again, that depends on how they're grown. The fruit ripens in that October to November time frame, and they're reported to be cold hardy to 10 degrees Fahrenheit for short periods. Now this doesn't mean that they can be grown where it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit all winter long, but if you live in a location where an occasional freeze comes through that might get into the teens all the way down to 10 degrees, maybe overnight for three to four hours, these guys can handle it. So that's something to keep in mind when you're selecting your varieties. Miho is another Texas A&M developed variety, large, mostly seeded fruit, about three inches in diameter, that eight to 12 foot tall, six foot wide range as well, just like Sito, they're related. Uh, the fruit does ripen October to November, so the traditional satsuma season. Again, reported to be cold hardy to 10 degrees Fahrenheit for short periods of time. So Miho and Sito are two that our northern growers should be looking at. Some very new varieties uh, coming up here with the Texas A&M stock, Orange Frost. Uh, this is a newer one, it's only been out a couple of years, so it's still being um, kind of looked at, but where peach trees used to be traditionally grown in Louisiana, Georgia, parts of Alabama, they're now starting to plant Orange Frost and our next variety, Arctic Frost, that we're gonna discuss, uh, because they can be reliably grown in zone eight, they can take 
temperatures down to 10, 9, 10 degrees, um, sometimes a little lower, it's been documented. Um, very, very cold hardy, so orange frost. It's not a completely seedless fruit. It's got one to two seeds per fruit. Um, what's interesting about orange frost and Arctic frost is that they're actually not grafted. Um, most of our citrus trees are grafted, as Dr. Joe had mentioned, um, but these are actually propagated through cuttings. And here's our Arctic frost. Again, Texas A&M developed this one. One to two seeds per fruit, it's not grafted. It's a larger size fruit, three to four inches in diameter, and it's been reliably grown in zone eight and reported cold hardy all the way down to nine degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty incredible for fruit that we think of as being tropical. Those are our Satsuma varieties. Remember, if you have any questions, post them to the Facebook discussion group. The link is gonna be posted on the class site. Um, share your Satsuma pictures, what varieties you like, and any tips you have for Satsumas.